Hi, my name is Vincent Rizukamachi. I'm a partner at Bird and Bird based in our London office, and I'm thrilled to be kicking off our Progress Through Pride series of podcasts today with my colleague Jocelyn. This is a series of podcasts in honor of Pride Month, where we will be looking at LGBTQIA plus experiences in the workplace across generations. Jess, would you like to introduce yourself and start us off? Of course. Hello, I'm Jess, and I am a business development and marketing executive based in Hong Kong. When I first started working, I think maybe in 2020, year 2020, I was with a boy then because I'm bisexual. So there wasn't really a real need to, to tell people that. But then I think in 2021 or 2022, I started dating with a girl and then I didn't really feel comfortable enough to tell everyone that I was just trying to well I still told some of my colleagues but then I would judge whether they're trustworthy whether they're open-minded before I did that but um so definitely back then like two years back then I wouldn't be like speaking about this on a podcast um i think it is obviously it's comparatively easier for me to be like in this generation i think it would be easier than it was but i feel like in professional setting and in at work i i'm always a bit worried that there might be people who would dislike me for who i am or think that i'm weird or something um i don't want those things to jeopardize my career so I didn't really want to say it but I feel like right now um I've decided to do it like it was partially impacted by you and also I feel that here like at Bird and Bird I feel the culture is it's, it's really like quite you, you feel that people would actually feel happy like for you if you're you're happy in your life, they they feel happy for you. They don't really judge whether you're with a girl or with a boy. And I'm starting to to think that it is okay to be me, and also feel the need to kind of authenticate myself instead of just concealing and hiding and not telling people or just telling lies and telling people that I'm with a boy or whatever. I I think it is okay to be myself here at least at Bird and Bird. So Vincent, has there been any changes in the workplace since you started working or you first started your career compared to now? Has there been any changes? I think it is pretty difficult for me to answer this question because when I started my career, I was in France and now I am in the UK. And it is true that I feel that there are cultural differences in approaching diversity and inclusion depending on the country where you sit. Um, but I definitely see, of course, change. Probably uh, 10 to 15 years ago, you would not be having as many DNI and i uh, initiatives within a law firm. It was maybe a bit more taboo. Um, you would not be um, having Pride Month you would not probably having be having a conversation with a colleague based in uh, on the other side of the world because the bridges were not between different countries and between different communities were not as built as they are today. So it was uh, a bit more probably difficult to um, visibly see the initiatives that I believe probably were starting to exist and starting to be put in place but not as visible as they are today with all the initiatives. All these brands today who um, um, show a rainbow flag on their logo during Pride Month, where, where, wherever you are in, in Europe, um, um, also all these uh, cities and uh, city councils that take the rainbow flags out during Pride Month. And, and so, of course, you can visibly see progress and you can visibly see that it has now become, in many places, non-negotiable for the LGBTQIA community to be promoted, to be accepted, to be loved. Um, but there are still progress to be made. But it is true that um, based on 
what I could see at the beginning of my career versus what I can see today. There's clearly some progress, a lot of progress that was made, and it's clearly much easier to be outspoken and to be visible in today's society. Is there any like policy or like any kind act by your colleagues that made you um, be yourself or it, like be more comfortable at work right now? To be honest, for me, it's part of the reason why I wanted to be more visible about who I am as a person, as, as a human being, is because I've always, as a younger lawyer and as a younger professional and as a younger man, felt a lot of shame about who I am. And I think that um, that's really something that I carried with me for many years. And I was really scared and worried to be who I am in the workplace because I was afraid of being judged or perceived differently or um, or um, valued even differently uh, for other reasons than my talent and my, uh, my, my capabilities. And for me, a couple of years ago, I realized that um, probably one thing that would have helped me would have been to perceive a young generation of leaders being exposed and showing who they are, um, because I think probably it would have helped me feel less alone and think that it is possible to achieve something uh, whilst belonging to the LGBTQIA plus community. And so this is why last year I wanted to um, basically send a signal to younger generations to show that it is safe to be who you are in the workplace. And I really believe that it is safe to be who you are at Bird and Bird as a firm. Maybe I have a question for you, uh, Jess, because you're from a younger generation. What kind of progress would you like to see in the next five to 10 years in terms of LGBTQ plus inclusion? I definitely would like to see in a grand scheme of things, I want to say, because I'm based in Hong Kong, and I would definitely hope that same-sex marriage would be recognized in Hong Kong, and or at least we can have civil partnership or a civil union, whatever you name it. Oh, and also, perhaps there could be some support for LGBTQIA plus people if they decide to have babies, because in Hong Kong, only legally married infertile couples can receive IVF treatments and since same-sex same marriage is not recognized as I said so we must have IVF done overseas and that could be really tricky when I'm employed and then like how can I suddenly just go overseas and do my IVF and then come back um, and also like if I decide to have a baby with my partner and she is the one to bear the baby then I don't even get the parental status so I'm hoping each workplace can help recognize that like this is my child and then I can apply or I, I can have access for the support such as like maternity leave or parental leaves yeah I think this is the progress that I'd like to see in five to ten years what about you Vincent do you think there is still progress that needs to be made I think then there is potentially some progress to be made from uh, outside of the community for the people who don't identify as, as LGBTQIA. And one of um, the things that I have in mind is look out for microaggressions, which are totally involuntary. Um, most of the people that I meet don't intend to to do harm at all. And, and we know that, but maybe... Think about uh, how you ask questions about uh, about a person when you engage with them. For instance, if you're engaging with uh, a female person, don't ask her if she has a husband, but maybe ask her if they have someone in their life, because that's a question that is a bit more open and that might, because if the person is gay or if the person is bisexual, just the question, by the way it's formulated, might somehow hurt them a little bit. And so... By just opening up a little bit, asking more broader questions, there is a chance that we can make our, the person we're having a chat with a bit more comfortable uh, with us. So look out for these little things that don't mean much and that often don't come with bad intentions, but sometimes can 
hurt the others, who's who've been used to hearing a lot of microaggressions on a daily basis that go against their identity. Thank you. I totally agree with you, especially I think on a point that people don't often have bad intention. They just don't know like why they did it. And this is like just normalized. They would just say, oh, when they talk to a female, they would just assume she has a husband or a boyfriend. Yeah. And I think these little things would help the world gets better. Yeah. So thank you so much, Twinson. Yes. I still I still experience situations where um where people or colleagues will tell me, Oh, look at this girl, isn't she blah 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 and um and it doesn't come from a bad place, but um, me I think, Oh yeah, I like her dress, but not my type, sorry, but she does have a very beautiful dress. Uh I also love pink, so um yeah, so I, People don't have bad intentions and we all have the best intentions, but it's all about how how we say things. I think today with my more experience and and more years being gay, I think it affects me less. But I know that as I grew through my professional career, I think that these little things really made the difference. So, yeah. Well, thank you very much, Jess, for uh, joining this first series of our Progress Through Pride podcast and speak soon. Thank you. Speak soon.